Let's take a look at the, the so-called delta function. I've put function in quotes here because this thing that we're going to develop isn't truly a function. Um, there's numerous ways of looking at this thing. Uh, some are more rigorous than others. We're going to do what works fairly well for a, um, a an introduction, a quick introduction to the idea. So what we want to start with is the idea of a family of functions. And so what we mean by this is that there's some basic function and then everybody else is just some modification of that. So as an example, let's consider the um, let's consider the function y equals x squared and we can make that into a family if we look at the functions y equals ax squared for different values of a. So in this case a is what we call a parameter. Uh, the distinction between a parameter and a variable is that the parameter can vary from situation to situation, but once we're in a particular situation, the parameter remains fixed, while the variables, x and y in this case, then change. So let's take a look at, at what the graph of y equals ax squared looks like for various values of a. So we'll start with... Um, with just a equals 1, which gives us then y equals x squared, which has this familiar graph. It's a parabola opening upward. Its vertex is at the origin. Um, so this is the case where a equals 1. If we were then to make a be 2, for example, what that does is it makes our parabola narrower or it stretches it vertically. So the blue now is what the graph would look like if a was equal to 2. And now let's suppose we had a value of a that was less than 1 in absolute value, like a equaling 1 half. Then what we get is a lower or a wider, flatter parabola like this. So this would be a equals 1 half. And of course it should be clear that if a were a negative value, we'd have a parabola opening downward like the green one I've just drawn in. So this is with a this is the situation when a is less than zero. So with that same uh, basic function, y equals x squared, but using different values of the parameter a, we get different pictures, uh, different graphs, and we get a, a family of functions. So now let's uh, let's move on and look. One thing I should have said back here is that we have um, our our parameter or our, our family is what we call a one parameter family. The only parameter is a. If we were to look at um, all the quadratics, all the parabolas with equations y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, then we'd have a three parameter family with the three parameters a, b, and c we're interested in particular. Uh, by the way, one thing I should have said. So now we go on to uh, the function of interest, which I'm going to indicate uh, the name of the function is, is the Greek letter delta. We'll put a little subscript h with it. h is going to be our parameter, actually. And then t will be our variable rather than x. And so this uh, family of functions Every one of these is a constant function, um, and they're constant uh, with a value, um, well, they, they have the value 1 over 2h if we're within h of 0. So in other words, if um, t is between negative h and h, which means we're a distance of no more than, than h away from 0. And outside of that interval, um, the value will also be constant, but it's constant with value 0. So let's take a look at what this, the graphs of these functions look like for several values of h. So let's, uh, let's start off um, just supposing that h equals 1. So if h is 1, then we're interested in the interval on the t-axis. 
between negative 1 and 1. And um, between those two values, um, our value of the function is 1 over 2 times 1, or 1 half. So the, the graph would look like this. It's 1 half if we're between negative 1 and 1. Um, let's see, let's move that down a little to where it's, where it's supposed to be. Oh, I'm not going to be able to do that. Well, anyway, that, that blue line should be at 1 half, even though it doesn't look quite like it is. And then outside of the interval from negative 1 to 1, um, the function has value 0. And right at negative 1 and 1, it, it still has value 1 half. And then at negative 1 and 1, uh, well, we need an open circle there to indicate that that's where the, the jump occurs. So this is the value, or this is the graph when h equals 1. Okay. And, and again, um, this value right here is 1 half on the x-axis. Okay, so let's suppose now that h uh, had value 2. If h was 2, then we're interested, or, or our function is 0 outside the interval from negative 2 to 2. So let's indicate that first this time. So I'm going to use red for this guy, so it's 0 out here outside of the interval from negative 2 to 2. And if we put in 2 for h, we can see the value of the function is 1 fourth, uh, between negative 2 and 2. So let's indicate that. And we have the same sort of open circles and closed circles as before. Okay, so the red is the case where h equals 2. Now let's pick a value of, um, of h that's, that's less than 1 in absolute value. So I'm going to choose um, h to be 1 fourth. Okay, so that means that our function will be 0 outside the interval between negative 1 fourth and 1 fourth. So let's see, let's put in, there's uh, negative 1 half and 1 half, and there's negative 3 fourths, negative 1 fourth, 1 fourth and 3 fourths. Okay, so we'll indicate this function with green. Um, so it's 0 outside of the interval from negative one-fourth to one-fourth. And in between there, let's see, two times a fourth is a half, and one over a half is two. So the value of the function is two between negative one-fourth and one-fourth. So again, this green picture is for the value where um, h equals one-fourth. So you can see our, our family of functions there. As h gets closer and closer to 0, um, the, the, the central part of the function gets higher and higher, but also narrower at the same time. OK, so if we were to go back to our um, first family of functions we looked at, which was y equals a x squared. Let's put a little twist on that. So uh, let me just put in the picture just for some general a. Our graph looks like this. We don't, we don't know in particular what the value of a is. But let's suppose we were to look now at y equals a times x minus 2 quantity squared. Now the effect of that is that we get the same y at 2 for this blue function as we get at 0 for the, quote, black function. So what that does is then takes our graph and slides it over so that the vertex of the parabola is now at 2. Uh, so the effect of writing that a, or that x minus 2, is a shift to the right of our graph. Likewise, if we were to do a uh, times x plus 1 squared, then um, at negative 1, we get the same y value, we get 0, uh, that we would get from our y equals ax squared. So um, this gives us a shift to the left by 1. 
So we end up with a picture like this. So the graph, the uh, shape of the graph shouldn't change, even though it may look a little different in my picture. Uh, but the um, it's translated to the left or to the right. So if we were to then look at um, the graph of delta sub h of t minus c, and we're in fact going to generally be interested in cases where c is greater than zero, um, then what we have is a picture that looks like this. Um, let's see, let me get rid of that if I can. Okay, so we're interested in greater than zero, so this is the part of the graph I'm really interested in is here. All right, so let me put in in blue some delta function uh, like we looked at previously. And so the graph might look like this. where again it's got some constant value around zero and then after we go a certain distance either way from the origin the function value becomes zero. So if I was then to go look at uh, so that, I'm sorry, that blue, that would be just delta sub h. And let's, let's take that and actually put it on the other side. Um, so let's see, back to the pen. And so this would be the function delta sub h of t. So the effect of putting that c in there, if c is greater than zero, is it gives us, uh, it shifts the function to the right by an amount c. So it still has the same function value. The graph looks exactly the same, except it's just slid over to the right by C units. So um, that's where we are at this point. Uh, what I think I'll do is let's, let's stop this video here and then we'll pick up um, on the next video from here with what we're, next, we're interested in next with this thing.